I just don't know if there's any room in the game industry for mediocre games. You know, a game that you probably love, that you know for a fact isn't really that great, but you personally really enjoy it and you're happy that it's made. Well, I just don't know if that's going to be the case anymore moving forward with the game industry. It's been no surprise that the gaming industry has had its problems throughout 2023 and continuing on through 2024. And we're mainly seeing this through layoffs. There's even a Wikipedia page about the amount of layoffs happening within the game industry alone. And we heard that as a major story throughout 2023, but look at 2024. It's not changing anytime soon, which is crazy to think because 2023 was one of the greatest years of gaming releases. There were so many amazing games out there, but apparently on the business side of things, it wasn't so peachy. Even Epic Games, the people behind Fortnite had to lay people off. And you know, if Fortnite's struggling, a lot of other companies are struggling. So that makes you think, what about all these other game studios out there who release decent games, not amazing games, must plays. How are they doing? Well, according to this article, not so great. Next studio being Ascendant Studios. Because after one week of saying they were hard at work at the next project, Immortals of Avium developer Ascendant Studios has reportedly furloughed most of the remaining staff. And we're talking like serious skeleton crew stuff with an estimated 30 total employees. And this comes after Ascendant Studios laid off 45% of their employees back in September of 23, just a month after the launch of Immortals of Avium. Now I'm sure many of you out there probably didn't really play it Immortals of Avium, that's most likely because there were so many other amazing games out in 2023 that you were going to play first and probably never got to Immortals of Avium because it looked just kind of meh. But the game was reviewed rather well. If you look at Metacritic here, it's a score of 69, pretty nice right there, but it's not like it's a bad game, just kind of a mid game average reviewer score of 6.1 as well. Not necessarily a bad game, but just something that just doesn't really captures a lot of people's attention. IGN said it was a great game. It scored it an eight, it's a solid score. And when you look at just the ratings in general, like a 3.7, it's not like a great game, but not terrible either. PC Gamer also gave it a 68%. It's like, it's a meh type of game. Certainly not like a must play type of game, but you know, if you want to jump in and you're looking for something similar, you might actually enjoy yourself. But it makes me wonder if there's just no room in the game industry for meh games. So what really led to the failures of Immortals of Avium? And this is where the cracks within the gaming industry start to show. Because Immortals of Avium was a big budget game at $125 million in budget when it comes to making this game. You can definitely tell with like the voice actor talent that they had, the graphical fidelity, and also backing of EA. But when you look at some of the sales statistics that we have here, again, this is Steam charts alone. This might be a little bit larger on the console platform, but Steam will definitely give you a different, a general idea of what's going on with it. And they sold roughly 40,000 copies on Steam, grossing about $1.5 million. Not exactly the $125 million. In comparison, say Modern Warfare 3 apparently took $1 billion to create. I've seen a few AAA publishers attribute to $500 million going to just the marketing of the game. And they're probably saying, Kevin, those are just Steam sales. What about the console population? Well, it doesn't really seem to look much better. When you look at Xbox most played games, Immortals of Avium is nowhere to be seen right now. And I tried looking for a reliable source for PlayStation numbers, but there was not really much to be found online because I like to keep that stuff hidden, which kind of makes sense that it could affect how people effectively play games. When you look at Steam alone here, that Immortals of Avium was not very well played with 480 people peak concurrent player count. There was another thing going against Immortals of Avium beyond just the game itself is its release window was not the best, which might surprise you because the game released on August 22nd. This is way before the typical fall releases that we see with all the major game releases that you would think to be less competition. But don't forget, 2023 was a rough year for releasing of a game because on August, back in the 17th, you had Red Dead Redemption 2 release on the various platforms, which was just a re-release. Again, yeah, it's an older game, but it's Red Dead Redemption 2. People are going to buy it. You had August 22nd, like we mentioned earlier, with Immortals of Avium. That same day, Marvel Snap, which is another very popular game out there. And then you also had just a few days after that, Armored Core, which was a very popular game. People gave very high reviews about that. But I think the biggest one we had to see talk about the elephant in the room, which was Baldur's Gate 3 that released on August 3rd. But even after that release date, on the PlayStation 5, you had Baldur's Gate 3 release, as well as Starfield release on September 6th. And with Immortals of Avian being like a story-based action game, there were plenty of other amazing story-based RPG action type of games releasing within like a very small window. And all this kind of added up to the furloughed employees of Ascendant Studios, which actually furloughed might be worse than actually being laid off as furloughed is a temporary suspension 
of work and payment and not a complete release of the employee like we've seen with all the layoffs throughout the years. So send the studio employees are kind of like in this weird limbo. Apparently this epic update coming to the game, which is supposed to give you like FSR updates for PC performance is actually being outsourced to another team. To me, this just kind of shows how volatile the game industry is. It's either a bang or a bust kind of experience. There is no middle ground left for the gaming industry as there's so many amazing games out there that are vying for your attention that it's tough to make a game that's worth making nowadays. That's why you see so much focus on live service on these really popular IPs, why you see so many sequels. So a game like Immortals of Avium can get the nicest score of 69, but then and be a complete flop. Now the struggles that Immortals of Avium had are not strictly due to the game industry as a whole as they did kind of fumble the ball a little bit when it comes to their presentation of the game. Particularly you can see right here, a little bit of a microcosm, but I think it kind of showcases the general tone of the game, right? Was with the official launch trailer right here. This was like when the game launched, the peak hype, right? And add more dislikes than actual likes right here. And also, I think this top comment really kind of sums up everything. So, you know, for me, nothing gets me more immersed in a unique fantasy realm more than sounds of generic hip hop repeating the same lyrics over indecipherable gameplay. Let me show you what they're talking about. Yeah, this is exactly what they're talking about here. Like, it's like when I'm looking at it, it's like, like I don't know what game I'm looking at right now. And also just like the vibe of what I'm looking at right here when it comes to just like the art style does not match with like the tone of the game that they want to present. So we could see less risk taking when it comes to investing into brand new games and IPs. I mean, we have some examples of them succeeding, right? As in like Hi-Fi Rush over here, getting a rating of 87 and it was very well received when it launched that shadow launch that I did. But for every Hi-Fi Rush, there's at least two or three Immortals of Avium. I just felt like this little story about Immortals of Avium and Ascended Studios is like a microcosm of what the gaming industry is dealing with right now where if you're not bringing in a ton of bucks your game isn't really going to be doing so hot so i just hope to see some type of balancing happen we see that happen right now with like power world and held Evers 2 blowing up of course those were overperforming games that they, they didn't even expect the game to do that well but i feel like 2024 as we saw earlier is just going to continue the same things we saw in 23 of more layoffs and reduction in size of companies to produce games so we could see publishers reworking how they make games these gigantic big budget games can be viable if they sell really well but there can be another Immortals of Avium which doesn't do well and really hurts the bottom line making higher ups in the corporate and things trying to appeal their stakeholders that saying like oh yeah we're not making Immortals of Avium or games like that anymore because we need to make sure that the games that we do make sell a lot. The current state of gaming is I think just kind of that power creep that we've seen of more features higher technology and more people being put into development of games that ends up blowing up these budgets to where they're barely even viable anymore. And we're currently seeing that momentum shift the other way now where it might go to smaller type of games that might be a little bit more sustainable. But let's just hope that doesn't result in the lack of quality that we would hope to see in our games moving forward. If you guys like this video, make sure you tap like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.